What is up guys, it's Troy at the Full Setup, back with another review for you and today we have the Deepcool MacCube 550 case. This is a brand new case from Deepcool. I don't think you can buy it anywhere as I'm making this video so I don't know the price on it but I can imagine it will be under £100 because it hasn't got any RGB lighting. Now we're not going to be doing my regular build video that we do in most cases today because I only just did a build video like last week so I just told Deepcool that I'm going to give you sort of a tour around it, give some thoughts and feelings, show you around this case, which I just love the look of. I'm in love with this case. So yeah, I'm going to show you around it, but there will be a full build coming on the channel over the next couple of months as well when I decide what sort of kit I want to put in it. So first things first, this case is available in black and also the white version that we have here. Now, one thing you're not really going to see in this video is this is a matte white, like a textured matte white it looks absolutely beautiful it almost looks like it's had like a white primer paint on it i really like this it's got stormtrooper written all over it now as for the dimensions it is 52 centimeters in height or 20 and a half inches depth going backwards it's 51 and a half centimeters or just over 20 inches again and then the width of this case is 23.5 or like just over nine and a quarter inches so i would definitely say this is a mid tower case but you can pack quite a lot of things in it now there is one thing that i noticed straight away straight away that i'm not very happy with about this case and that is the up here by the front io so there seems to be an indicator light here which i imagine is a power indicator light then we have it's really hard to see because they've done the writing in white on top of white. So the only thing I can think they've done, so the only thing I can think they've done is the same writing from the black case and done it in white. So yeah, that is the power switch. Then we have a USB 3.0, or is it 3.1? It's got that blue color to it, but I imagine it's USB 3. Mic, audio, USB, and reset switch. I would like to see an RGB model of this later down the line. I do know that Deepcool like to do um, RGB versions of all their cases. There is also the Gamer Storm logo down here. Again, very hard to see because it's in white. Now this is the bit I love about this case. Love, love, love. Because cases always come with lots of spares. That's just reminding me we need to show you the spares. The cases come with spares, screws and everything. But the one thing I find they never throw in, and this isn't even Deepcool, this is every case manufacturer, is extra thumb screws for your tempered glass. Like that just completely ruins the look of your PC if you lose one. And I'm sure you've done it. I know I always say I take my PCs apart a lot for the channel. You're still going to take it apart to clean it. The amount of times I've dropped the thumb screw and it's rolled under my desk and I'm panicking trying to find it is an absolute nightmare. Now what you're seeing up here is like a handle. And imagine you, you think there's like some quick release switch or something like that. It's a lovely handle as well. Nice finish like a seal finish on the top game storm logo so you imagine there's a handle that we pop out and it just goes pop 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 yeah nah man this thing's magnetic yeah so you literally just pop it it's a bit stiff pull it up magnetic glass panel deep cool that's it I don't even care about the writing. This case is a 10 for me. Straight 10. We don't even need to look inside it. We're going to look inside it. 100%. This case is a 10. Knuckle test. It's a bit thin. The case is still a 10. Get some writing on the front. Thin. The case is still a 10. Ah. Oh. Magnetic tempered glass panel. The other thing as well. Big up on the stickers as well, because on the other cases, the stickers they used to put on them, they put a sticker on it saying, you know, be careful, glass. And it would leave loads of residues. So they've sorted that out. Just need to sort their writing out. Now, on the front panel, there's like a recess going all the way down here. You sort of see it goes in diagonally like that. That's going to be for your front airflow. The front panel is okay to get off, but just be careful with it. Because this is matte paint. And yeah, that's just scratched just a tiny bit on the bottom bit. Probably not going to see that because of camera focus, but yeah, just be very careful taking the front panel off. Now, as you can see here, there is room for three 120 millimeter fans, and you're probably thinking, why isn't there cutouts for 140 fans? I'm sort of thinking that because I did plan to put two Notchua 140 fans in the front of this. The rest of the case was going to be RGB, but that was going to be Notchua, so 
This always happens to my plans, like straight away, I can't put in what I want to put in. It's not Decal's fault, I didn't look at the case before I started planning building in it. I didn't even read the specs, so yeah. 320mm fans and there seems to be like a hole here as well. So that'll be for putting in all your fan cables and all that stuff as well. Would it be though? Because now one serious thing of note is that there doesn't seem to be a way to get this front dust filter out without unscrewing a screw in each corner and removing the complete plastic front. It's not ideal but it's not the biggest complaint. At least you can actually get to the dust filter but yeah. Little complaint now, really. It just seems like there's space to have a slide out dust filter here. Maybe I'm missing it. No, nah, there's no way to pull that dust filter out. So you do have to take the four screws off. Just adds a little bit more time to clean in, but it's not going to be that difficult. Over to the accessories then. You get two of these. We need to figure out where these go. Three and a half inch drive bays, some screws and four... Yeah, one, two, three, four cable ties. Come on, that's a little bit skimpy. The last one came with like 10 or even 15. Four, that's not enough. So here is the cooler I'm gonna use eventually in this system, but I will be putting it in my other deep cool Ryzen build that we made last week as well for the review. So this is the Castle V2 360. Doesn't really look much different because it's hard to make a better looking CPU block than this. Absolutely incredible. So what's new with this one? It's going to have that updated RGB hub for plugging all of your devices into rather than the sort of bit hard to show on camera daisy chain cable. But most importantly, it's got that anti-leak tech inside. So you see this big bit here? That is essentially got like a ball bag in it. It's got a real nice feeling ball bag in it, which means you can't fill the entire system up with water because the ball bag is taking up some of the space. So when you get too much pressure, it gives the ball bag a good old squeeze that releases air and it stops your liquid cooler from leaking. Once the pressure goes down, the ball bag expands and yeah, gets some more air. So basically it's ball bag tech, really good. Can't wait to use this cooler, RGB fans as well. So yeah, nice. Over to the inside of the front of the case then. So as we know, we can put up to a 320 millimeter AIO in the front, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. You just wanna put fans in here. So I am probably just gonna use that RGB fans now. And you've also got room for a 120 millimeter in the bottom as well. Now I'm not too sure if you can fit the 120 once you've put the 360 radiator in, so you'll have to wait for my review on that. I will leave a comment in the description of this video because I haven't unboxed the 360 AIO, so I'll sort of hold it into place with a fan in the bottom and let you know, come back in the comment section. So again, you can fit a 360 millimeter radiator in the front. But you can also, it's got spacing for 240 fans, or you could just use these as fans as well. Now for the basement compartment section, I do like that it's sealed off here. So that means you're not going to have any cables popping out. But there is a little hole there, you can see there, you can give it a good sort of finger. And you can get some cables in there. Now we have sort of the, I think NZXT started this, didn't we? Like the uh, SSD drive mounts, you can put an SSD in there, maybe an RGB one. Really glad to see grommets because the last deep cool case didn't have grommets. So loads of grommets to bring your cables up. I really like they sort of go the whole way across so it doesn't matter which wire needs to come up. There's plenty of space for it. Down at the bottom here, there is like a plastic gamer store logo. Slightly transparent so you could put RGB cabling in there. And I think this maybe might have been done for when they do release. I'm not saying they are going to, but if they do release a, they call it the 3F version now, where they include free RGB fans, I can really see them lighting this up as well. So that could be coming in the future. That's just something I would like to see. It's not a guarantee. Screw holes here for their vertical GPU bracket. G vertical GPUs aren't really for me. The case isn't wide enough as well to do more than a two thick GPU. So if you've got a thicker two and a half slot or three slot GPU, you won't be able to use that, but if you're into side mounted GPUs, you've got that as well. So over to the top half of the case, and the first thing I wanna talk about is GPU clearance, because if we put a radiator in the front here, or even fans here, because the fans are gonna stick out. By the time you've got fans, it's gonna come out to about there, and this motherboard area has been slightly recessed. So they say you can fit up to a 460 millimeter GPU in here, which you can, but you can only put that in there if you're not putting fans in there. We will test that theory. 
I will um, get back to you on the comment section on that. If you're even not putting fans in there, you definitely don't think you can fit a radiator unless you mount the radiator in this back piece. And there is room for tubing to come through up here. So if you've got like a low profile CPU cooler, maybe if it's something quite small, so maybe like the L240, you might be able to push the tubes up through. If you're doing custom liquid cooling, you could possibly put the radiator in the back. But I think if you are utilizing this area, I would say you're probably only gonna get about a 30 centimeter graphics card in here to 32 centimeter graphics card. So that's good to know. Again, more rubber grommets all the way. I don't know what's going on with the top up here. Firstly, it doesn't have any rubber grommets in it when there's areas for everywhere else, which seems a bit weird. And I sort of feel like this could go all the way across. Yeah, it's a bit, bit weird. And there is lots of height in this case as well, but there's no fan areas for putting a radiator or fan. Would I have liked to have seen some? Yeah, I would have possibly liked to have seen some cutouts up the top and then a you know, real nice black dust filter going over the top. Vented air here, lots of vents for the PCIe. Like I said, I feel like the airflow is going to be doing this a lot. So there is lots of vented PCIe slots. So that's going to pull air into your graphics card. And then you've got the 120 at the rear to exhaust it. And that just has a three pin header on it. So that's a DC one. Standoffs are already fitted in. So yeah, do like the look of this. I feel like there should be two more rubber grommets. So I decided to put a GPU in the system because I really wanted to test this 460 mil GPU they're talking about. And I'm saying, well, I know you can only do it if it was in the front here going all the way across. And it could only be a two slot fit graphics card as well because you've got this mount here. So you're only gonna fit a two slot in it. Now, if you have a little look down here, i will use that to square it up. Now there is a slight little recess here. So the GPU can only come to here. And if you were to put a fan on the front of a radiator in the back, that is the sort of clearance that you're gonna get. So over to the back of the case then, and as you can see, we've got another one of these airflow. And let's bring air in the front. And then we've got this really cool triangle looking thing. So that is to direct all of the air that's being dumped out of the back from the radiator or from fans. That is to make sure it directs the air out of the system. It doesn't just push it straight all down this way behind the motherboard. Only testing can do. I might put my Noctua Industrials in there. And I can sort of test that fact. I can feel how much airflow is coming through. Two thumb screws either side, which are not held into place. Back of the case then, first things first. I wanted to see if I can fit a radiator through here. Doesn't really appear to be enough space. That's quite a low profile as well, so that's the deep cool Maelstrom. And I don't think that's because I've got part of the mounting gear on it either. So yeah, you could definitely put it in it for liquid cooling. I think you would struggle to get one in there if they were a closed loop AIO cooler. As for the three and a half inch bays, I'm gonna say, honestly, I'm not that much help. I'm gonna need someone in the comment section to do this. Maybe I'll come back at a later date with someone else that buys them. The only sort of place I can think is they do line up with the 120 holes at the back here. So you could maybe screw them directly into the radiator. I think that almost the way that's designed, it's almost to look like it pulls airflow airflow through again would be down in the bottom there's no way for these to screw into each other neither is there anything in the instructions saying where they go but again we have two of the 2.5 inch pull out ones in here i did plan to put my editing rig in here so getting a couple of three and a half inch bays in it is probably going to be quite important to me because i wanted to have a little raid drive going on so I will possibly screw them into the back of the radiator. Not too sure though, not too sure, but that is, that's the only place I feel that they can go. There is nothing in the bottom down here. So yeah, maybe unless you had one in the front on show, which could look quite cool. As for connections, we have the USB three, HD audio, and here are your power reset switch and LED light. They're gonna be quite hard to see. And finally, PSU clearance. So this goes to like 
19 centimeters that way. What we got out the back. And we've got about 30 centimeters as well. So you're gonna be able to fit any power supply you want in here. You can stuff all the cables down in here. It's a little bit shallow in here, but there's more than enough. 25 centimeters to put all your cables and there's plenty of places to route all the cables as well. So there was just an overview of the Deepcool Mac Cube 550 case. And yeah, I really can't wait to build in it. It's got a couple of quirks, like I said, about maybe possible GPU clearance in areas, the paintwork as well. Because I did chip a little bit on the bottom as it dropped there. I did drop it though. So, you know, maybe if you do build on this, I'd probably put some plastic underneath it. It's the matte paint finish. And obviously like the little, like I said, the areas where it's in white. So it's got some quirks, but straight 10. I haven't even built in this yet. And this is going to be one of my favorite cases that I've had. This brings me back to when I first got my NZXT, is it the S340? You know, when that case first came out, there was just something about it that just, for its price, you know, there was some maybe some better case out there, but it was just something about it. I loved that case and I used it for a couple of years. And I feel for me, this is my new S340. This is a case that I've been missing in my life, even if it is a little bit thin on the top. Love this case, highly recommend it. I'm not even going to start building in this for at least a month now. So if you do have any questions or queries, I might not be able to answer them as much till then. But yeah, I will come back and answer your questions once I start putting gear in hardware. I normally have my system running for about a month before I even release a video anyway. So yeah, any questions, let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you come back and watch the Castle V2 video as well. Can't wait to test that cooler out. Going to do some overclocking and performance. Anyway, that's it for me doing the end of video waffle. I really need to learn how to end a video.